It is the quality of one's convictions that determines success, not the number of followers. Remus Lupin, from the movie Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. It's I, not in the book. I don't remember, and I didn't bother to look it up. Aww. But, I mean, regardless, Remus Lupin is one of my favorite characters in the Harry Potter books, hands down. I like this moment, too. This is an exchange between him and Kingsley. He says that, and Kingsley says, who said that? And he goes, me. <laughs> Oh, well, you know, nothing like a couple of members of the Order of the Phoenix to brighten your day. And actually, this is obviously incredibly relevant in today's world with social media and all of that. I didn't know that this was a Harry Potter quote, and I should know. (laughs) (laughs) I'm wearing my Deathly Hallows shirt today. Mm -hmm. Good good job, Lupin. You go, Lupin. Way to do the thing. Exactly. Yeah. That's fun to say, too. That's... some syllables in there that I'm roll off werewolf. the tongue. I'm a werewolf. <laughs> Quality of one's convictions. Quality of one's convictions. Uh, anyway. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Positivity. Positivity. This is the Feel Good Podcast where we give you good vibes by, by the, the spoonful. spoonful. I am your host, Miss Mary Lou Ryan. I'm also your host, Jacob Kahn. Yeah, and we're here to hopefully brighten your days for yet another week. Put, put smiles on your faces. Yeah, oh, 100%, 100%. Multiple smiles on each of your faces. <laughs> oh, so. my goodness gracious. Yes. This week, I feel like, did this week even happen? Where'd... It feels like we just did the uh, the last week's podcast, like yeah. a minute ago. And not in a bad way. Yeah, no, it kind of crept up on me, too. This week just whew, flew by. Yeah, same. So. Yeah, I mean, like, we were busy doing things. I'm back to my regular full YouTube and social media posting schedule. Yeah. You're back to work full time, uh... doing all this stuff. And, you know, we're pretty much, like, normalizing our lives and settling into a routine that involves the kittens now Mm -hmm. it's less like they're oh my gosh this new thing what do we do with them and more like oh hello you're chasing our toes in the morning good morning to you (laughs) yeah we're we're finally getting into like a normal day routine for us because we were we were moving for a while and then we were away for a while and then then we were still moving for getting kittens and yeah. Dealing with them getting neutered, but now everything's sort of starting to feel like we're in a rhythm. We're doing the same thing now on a daily. Like in so. a, in a good way though. Like establishing yeah. good daily habits, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The cats right. are still wearing cones. Just um, for a little bit. Yeah, it's been oh, a week since their surgery. They uh, don't but... seem too upset about it. Well, they were. One of our cats had some complications, which have been taken care of. So we have to leave the cone on Mariadoc for a full two weeks. And we don't want to make him feel bad by Pippin, our little tuxedo kitty, running around without a cone. So we're just going to leave them both in cones. <laughs> They look cute in these cones. Yeah, they don't walk very well either, which I try not to laugh at too much, but it's pretty delightful. Mariadoc kind of trots like a horse. Like he puts his front legs, his front paws out like around the cone, I guess because he can't see where they're going. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's pretty funny. He lifts his arms up really high as he walks. And then Pippin just kind of like does this head waddle thing. It's pretty. It's It's pretty delightful. Anyway, so that's our weekly cat update, I guess. Cat Uh, update. (laughs) Jacob, what's the tea today? Actually, I I mean, I have a a sense of what's in it, but you brewed it. So it's a it's a mint and vanilla blend. Is that correct? Yeah, this is a home blend, actually. So my sister Kelly was doing her own tea blends for a while, and she ordered a bunch of teas in bulk, Mm -hmm. and she had a crap ton of just dried peppermint leaves left over, and she was like, do you want some? And she brought me a whole jar full for Christmas. So I've been playing around, and this is those just like pure peppermint leaf mixed with a really, really good vanilla extract, just the tiniest bit. Mm -hmm. If I have vanilla bean... You know, I, I'd go that route, but we don't. So so unsweetened, loose leaf vanilla peppermint brewed specially for me. Yeah. And mixed specially for me by Miss Mary Lou. It's yeah. delicious. I'm drinking it too. I actually haven't had it yet. Is it a good amount of vanilla? I think it's great. 
I think it's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you were drinking the same. Yeah. We are drinking the same today. I just felt like I wanted something relaxing. My tummy has been acting up a little bit because I can't have gluten. And I had like, I think some accidentally. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's not fun. Mm -mm. So recovering from that. But I'm okay. I'm just severely intolerant. I'm not actually allergic. So it feels like I'm going to die, but I won't. <laughs> nah, you good. You won't die. Yeah, no, I'm great. It just feels like just daggers hurts. are attacking my intestines all the way down. Not fun. No. So, hey, Mary. Hey, Jacob. Last week, you, <laughs> your self-care experiment for last week was to make time, schedule time for yourself to see friends. How have you been doing with that? Actually, I've been pretty good. You know, as per usual with me, I go through my like, see all the people and then just like introvert recoveredness. But I did actually have two friends over. We had two friends over yesterday for a day full of board games, mm -hmm. which is really nice. And I do have plans to see someone else tomorrow. It is a little bit less like a like a wave like it used to be. Yeah. I mean, I still more evenly think, spaced. you know, two days of friends in a single week is a lot for me. <laughs> Yeah, for your introvert I just, yeah, brain. I, I just, I love being with people and I love to spend my time with people that recharge me and fill me with joy, mm. but I do still end up feeling pretty dang wiped. Like it was hard to get out of bed this morning. I mean, also playing board games for like 10 hours is Takes a lot like very you. exciting and I love it, but gosh, it can be exhausting. I feel the same way as I yawn. As um, you yawn. I know. I literally, I was like, I need to take a break in the middle of the day. And I just like lied down and snuggled with Pippin for a little while. He was being very cute. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think that's been going well. Good. And I'm starting to think now, oh, who do I really want to see that I either haven't seen in a while or what not and do like more of the abstract friend route. Like if I could maybe do one a week, not abstract, friend, yeah. just friends I haven't seen in a while and maybe don't see more regularly, mm -hmm. reach out, make plans, drink tea, have a good time. Maybe the more often and more regular of a thing it becomes for you too, the less pressure you'll feel to make it like a 10 hour gaming marathon thing true <laughs> yeah and although I, mean, I do enjoy those i know i mean they wipe me yeah. yeah oh yeah we slept a lot last night and then did not want to get out of bed this morning nah. i was a couple minutes late for my doctor's appointment Oops. <laughs> so anyway jacob last week mm. you were saying you were cooking recipes out of a specific cookbook you got for Christmas. Sure was. And last week you made a freaking cake mm -hmm. and all the exciting things. So how's that been going this week? So I made a cake. I made shepherd's pie. Oh my God, the shepherd's pie was so good. I made a super greens soup, which is something I've never done before. And I used a like a sour cream topping, which like a fake sour cream topping because it's a vegan thing. And I don't normally like sour cream in many circumstances, but I was like, yeah, I'll give it a try in this. It worked really well. It did. It was like sour cream mixed with tarragon. lemon and tarragon. And that was actually really good. I made uh, cupcakes. I made a frittata an hour ago. Um, Not even. It's cooling as we're doing the podcast. This I'm is big. like our frittata cool down time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I have ingredients to do other recipes too. Yeah. From, you from have like book. nacho dip coming up. Nacho dip. Yeah. I'm excited. My dip. Nacho dip. Nacho dip. So. Yep. Dip, dip, yeah. Dip. It's, it's been going good. Um, and I, I, uh, I'm enjoying the process of doing it and also the activity to look forward to, to think about. And doing nice. it, you're enjoying yourself still. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's maybe mildly more stressful to cook out of a cookbook for me than to just cook. I Having to reference a, a book to be like, how much of this do I need? Oh, I need this to be ready already, and I don't. And like, you know, for me, following linear things like that is a little more stressful than just being like, ah, I'll just, whenever it's, I'll just throw it together and blah, blah, blah. But, but I still enjoy doing it, even though it's a little stressful. And... It's fun. It's a project. I'm working on things. And well, and also you have a phenomenal memory. So, oh, I, yeah, I know. I know all these, these recipes. Right, already. they're just logged in your brain now. Yeah, yeah. So it's really you only need to use a recipe once, and then you have it forever. Your memory astounds me. Not every forever, time. but for the well, time being. For quite a while. Who knows? How long have you known how to make 
that magic hummus recipe by heart since the day i made it the first time it's been i gave you that recipe and i don't years. even know it by heart <laughs> yeah yeah alton brown's hummus recipe it's really good by the way it's good yeah so mayor yeah Mar. what's your self-care for this week um well jimmy stewart <laughs> you want the moon, man. So this week, as we are settling into more of a routine, I'm feeling a little bit more like calm and settled and grounded. So this week, I've been working on taking steps to define my goals, hmm. just defining them specifically and making a game plan to get there and finding things that will help me. So for nice. instance... I have big aspirations when it comes to voiceover. I love Ooh. voice acting so much. Yeah. It's just the ultimate playtime. They don't care what you look like. They just care if you, you got the, the talent and the voice. And it's just, it's the ultimate freedom in acting that I found. And I just love it so much. <laughs> um, so we took steps now the little hallway that leads to nowhere in our new apartment. As soon as I saw it, I was like, this is the voiceover studio. It is now covered in blankets and curtains. Yeah. I call it the the voiceover blanket fort. It's just this little <laughs> alcove le next to our door. It, it really is a hallway leading to nowhere. Yeah. Um, and I've been working on setting it up so that it's pretty much clear and it's like play space, ready to go, really easy setup. So I don't have any anxiety around like, oh, it feels cramped in here. Oh, I need to get this ready and do that. Um, mm -hmm. And we've been using a little whiteboard on our refrigerator, which helps me keep track of auditions because yeah. I get them in really randomly. Some of the auditions are like, I need it by 3 p.m. today. Some are due next week. And also any you know jobs that I or you do have actually recording for sessions, those go on that board as well. Because I know having it in front of me in a place that's not just my email, because I, I have anxiety around emails, um, which yeah. is something I'm working on. But putting it up on a board not only is a reminder, but it also lays out my goals, my game plan, makes it visible, and I can visually cross things off, which, you know, feels wrong good mm -hmm. um and so just clearly defining my voiceover goals yeah i have plans to reach out to some more voiceover friends and get tea and chat and the noise in my head has settled down a little bit now that we're in more like of a settled home That's environment so great and yeah because i felt a little lost for a second there and i was like i don't know but i don't want to lose sight of this i just I feel stressed because my apartment is really messy we and I don't have a couch. All over the place. And yeah, we needed to to get furniture and to get the cats that we wanted and get settled. But now, especially having that space where you can just, you know, put up the microphone and record mm -hmm. and not have to worry about, you know, all the little details about making sure that the sound quality is what you want and that, you know, you can look at the sides and have everything set at the same time and have a recording area like it's just ready to go exactly you've got it's the like board where you plan stress. things out so now it's it's probably more fun than it was right yeah and i even you know i have the microphone stand set up in there to my height that i need it and i yeah. even have a mini uh flexible grippy tripod that i wrapped around my microphone stand with a cell phone mount on it because so for auditions cool. i always read my sides on my cell phone so I literally like clip my cell phone to the side of my mic stand that way and I just read my sides. Your cell phone can hang out in there with you. Get it? And hang out. Hang out. I <laughs> get it. Because like, yeah, in the old place, I was using an actual separate tripod to clip my phone onto like a full size one. And it was just, it was too much. So not only is it all set up and ready to go, but it's big enough where I really feel like I have the room to play. Mm. Um, so I'm, I'm really thrilled. Awesome. Yeah. So anywho, Jacob, what yeah. is your self-care experiment from this past week? This is a little bit more serious. Mm -hmm. I've talked about before on the podcast, but I'll briefly mention again how I, I'm pretty sure that I have a form of OCD, um, OCTD, an obsessive compulsive thought disorder, where I sort of get a um, 
typically negative uh, thought in my head that just spirals and spirals repeat, out of control. On repeat, on repeat, on repeat. To the point where sometimes I don't even notice that it's happening and I just start to believe in the irrationality in my brain. Um, I've been really trying this week to acknowledge when that's happening and to not necessarily to change the fact that it's happening because I don't know how to do that exactly, but to acknowledge when it's happening and to label it appropriately. And what I've found in trying to do that is that a lot of, a lot of my thoughts are really abusive to myself really they really are self-abuse and i think it's been helping to just put that label on it because it takes the belief in them out of it for me it puts me on the outside looking in a little bit more than sitting at the heart of the storm of it if that makes sense yeah by being able to identify what's happening to you you're then able to separate yourself and your emotions from it and put you in a more observational standpoint that's yeah. less absorbing to your being your mind whatever and it, it doesn't stop the process of the thoughts there is a way i'm sure to do that i don't know what that way is but at current at present that's been helping me to step back a little bit from it and not be as emotionally invested in it when it's happening mm-hmm. and it's less debilitating you know i find myself able to move on from it quicker, but also to continue to exist and do things in the process while it's happening. So do you find that having the cats around can kind of help you oh, yeah. pull yourself outside well, of that? Well, little? the cats also, the cats definitely um, contribute to that process, but they also make that process, make the event shorter because they distract that part of my brain as well. They pull me into a another cycle of thoughts that's generally more positive so so that's been really great that's really wonderful Um, it's it's mostly a thing that happens i should say at work and work is where i where i work right now my day job is a really negative environment for a lot of reasons specifics that i won't get into but just it's a it's a constant struggle for me while i'm there and it's also a place where i'm you know expected to at least put on the appearance of being the complete opposite of that, of, of being the most genial and, and happy, yeah. happy-go-lucky person around. So It can be hard when I, I can identify with that a lot. I've had some really hard emotional struggles in the workplace before, in places where I am expected to be happy-go-lucky, smiley, the most agreeable, helpful person, and I'm crumbling on the inside Yeah. to the point where periodically I have to excuse myself to go cry in a closet. <laughs> so, yeah. And that's never yeah, fun no. to feel like you need no. to, you know, do that. So, um, so at work, by identifying this is a compulsive thought that's repeating over and over in my my brain this isn't me yeah yeah just making sure that i'm identifying the moments when it's happening and not just allowing it to be a part of my thought process and go unnoticed because if it goes unnoticed then it it starts to become a part of my subconscious and it it, it starts to it starts to yeah be the base for a lot of my other perceptions of things and that's not that's not good yeah. Puts me in a really bad fun. place. So. Well, I'm really glad that you're, you know, again, taking steps to work on this. I know before we've talked about trying compulsive positive thinking yeah. to battle that. Um, and But by simply identifying it, mm-hmm. you'd be like, oh, this is that thing that's happening in my brain. Yeah. And just to make sure that I'm saying it in, in my head consciously over and over that I'm making that a a cyclical thought um, that this is a irrational um, thought disorder that I'm dealing with. This is not, it's not you. This is not reality. And this is not me. This is just a part of my brain that's spinning out of control, you know? Mm -hmm. 
So that's kind of you. Yeah. I think that's great. Thanks. I'm excited to see this one like further develop and whatnot. I'm as trying. You, as you add more things to your toolbox as, you know, ways to deal with these compulsive thoughts. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's really wonderful. I'm really proud of you. Well, thanks. I mean, even when we figured out that this was a thing that you had, that was a huge moment. Yeah. And just being able to put like a name on it and we're like, oh my freaking goodness, this Mm -hmm. sounds exactly like these things that you're dealing with, so... Yeah, and obviously when you like, don't when you don't know that you're dealing with something, I mean, it's for a long time. I I really believe that this is just how human brains worked. That I that everyone was dealing with this, and that I just wasn't handling it appropriately. You and know? if you are experiencing some kind of what you suspect is a mental disorder, please don't be afraid to seek help. Mm-hmm. You know, we had a few weeks ago. Someone said they finally went to see a psychiatrist. They can talk to someone. They have prescriptions. I'm on prescription medication for depression, actually. I'm not ashamed of it at all. Mm -hmm. And I'm on anxiety medication that I take every day. Um, And it makes a huge difference in my life being able to just function as a human. So, you know, don't don't be afraid. There's no shame in talking to someone or seeing your doctor and figuring out the right kind of medications for you and mm. your specific conditions. Deserve the help. Seek help. You're, You're worth, worth it. it. Say it again. Seek, Seek help. help. You're, You're worth it. it. Seek help. You're worth You're it. You're worth it. Yeah. yeah. Communally news. <sighs> Welcome to Community News. This is the mm. part of the podcast where we take good news from you, the listeners, yeah. and we give you a little shout out Ooh. here on the podcast, celebrate your general awesomeness, and I have some really fun stuff for you today. Very exciting. All right, all right. Let's hop right into it. Okay. So I was tagged on Twitter by Quantum Cyclop. Hello. Yeah. Hello, Quantum Cyclop. And... They said they went out and dated themselves today. Yeah, Came back from the tea shop with a teapot, matching teacups, and three new teas. Mm. Today was amazing. Oh, I love that. Yes, Quantum Cyclop. You dated yourself. Heck yeah. I want to make this thing of dating yourself a thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I made a whole episode about it on my YouTube channel. We talk about it all the time. We talked about it, like, recently, because you'd, like, take yourself to the movies Mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. You took yourself to that tea shop that you've been wanting to go to and getting those things. And, you know, granted, dating yourself doesn't always involve spending money. Um, No, but but spending time on something for you. Spending time on yourself. And if you can afford it, it's a little money too for your teapot and your tea. It's so exciting. I hope you're enjoying your teas. Me too. You also wrote that one of those teas was a Lady Grey, which is my yes. one of my best friend's favorite teas ever. Mm-hmm. And I quite like Lady Greys, which They're is a delicious. variation on Earl Grey. Mm-hmm. Delightful. So I was really excited to... this. Again, was tagged. They tagged me at Miss Mary Lou on Twitter. You can do this throughout your week as well. I got a few this week, which was great. At Miss Mary Lou, hashtag positivity podcast. So super exciting. I retweeted it. I also reposted it on my Instagram. So really exciting stuff. Thank you for writing in. You're a wizard. The world needs more dating yourself. Yeah, right? I was so excited by this. It was kind of ridiculous. It's great. Alrighty, so on Instagram, this one is from Jess underscore Sabatini. Hi, Jessica, Hi Jess. we love you. And this past week was her birthday. Yeah. So her boyfriend Jack. Happy birthday. I know, happy birthday. Uh, her boyfriend Jack built a post-apocalyptic world and sent her on a treasure hunt within that world in their apartment. Uh, he even typed out letters from an ally who was giving her the clues. Whoa. It was so cool the last clue led her to her presence she loves him so much that's so cool that's so cool interactive birthday present for your birthday (sighs) present i know and they're so i i I love jess and jack they're good friends of ours um and they're so good to each other you are they're so loving and like i remember once when jess was over one night really recently she's like i have to be out of the house tonight because jack is working on my present (laughs) And I was like, I have no idea 
what that is. But um, yeah, come mm-hmm. over. Let's drink some tea and have a nice time. And we did. And I guess he was building her a post-apocalyptic scavenger hunt. <laughs> like, how freaking fun is that? It's not your dang birthday every day. It's true. So A plus job to A, Jack. Good job. Yeah. Boyfriend goals. And um, Jessica, I'm so glad that you enjoyed that. You deserve it. You're a wonderful, loving human. Happy birthday. You're a wizard. All good things. Thank you for sharing that with us. Like, what a freaking fun thing. What magic. I want to do a post-apocalyptic, like escape room yeah that would be really good that's sort of what this sounds like only no, you didn't have to escape yeah you had yeah, to find you your birthday you present. just had to find that's your dope. birthday present, <laughs> which is so cool love it so cool all righty and then this one is from joe and liz ryan my brother and sister-in-law hi hi guys and this one is special they went to go see one of their favorite esports teams play mm-hmm. live for their two-year anniversary, and their favorite esports team won. Hey, hey yeah. yeah! She even uh, made a little sign that said, like, all I want for my two-year anniversary <laughs> is for my team to win, and they put them on the big screen oh, so everyone could see, mm. which is so cute. And if, you know, side note, if any of you are League of Legends fans, uh, TSM is their is their team yeah. like no shade to cloud nine or anything but yeah so i, I think that's really cool and but tsm for life I, I guess we don't really follow it but we just know it through them which is really cool and i can't believe they won that's so incredible it's really cool and then afterwards they got pictures with the team also really cool right i mean yeah. a what a fun way to spend an anniversary like they're both so into esports and b their team actually freaking won which is great it's awesome yeah they like took the day for themselves went to the stadium made a whole day out of it for their two-year anniversary and it seemed like it was a really super fun time yeah we're ha- very happy for you guys. Yeah, we're so happy for you guys. That sounds dope. I- I- it's a heartwarming story. And also, you know, a heartwarming nerd-filled story, which I appreciate. Hey, hey guys, happy two years. Happy two years also. of being together. And uh, I guess go TSM? I don't TSM know. TSM for life. Don't come for me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Words, you're wizards. Good, good news, news everyone. everyone. I have good news. It's good news. Yeah, this is the part of the podcast where we bring you a good news story. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, this is where Jacob every week dives into the depths of the interwebs sure. to find something feel good mm-hmm. for our earbuds. So, Jacob, what is it that you have found for us today? Okay. The headline here is this eight-year-old chess champion will make you smile. Oh, shoot. Oh, my. I'm already into like all the parts of that title. So (laughs) let's hear about this eight-year-old chess champion. This uh, child's name is Tani Tolua Adewumi. He is a Nigerian refugee living in a homeless shelter with his family in Manhattan. He's been in the U.S. for a little over a year, maybe like a year and a half, Mm -hmm. I think. Um, He and his family fled Nigeria in 2017, fearing attacks from Boko Haram terrorists on Christians. They have been living in Manhattan in a homeless shelter ever since. They are all extraordinarily driven, hardworking people. His dad works two jobs, and uh, his, his mom is incredibly supportive of him and his education. He attends public school. There's a part-time chess teacher at this public school um, who taught him how to play chess, little over a year ago like he's been playing he has known the game of chess for just over 365 days and he's the champion yeah so recently i mean a couple weeks ago he won the new york state chess championship for his division which i think was kindergarten to third grade i know right (laughs) baby (laughs) but but here's here's the crazy thing okay so he his first tournament was very shortly after he started um, playing chess, his score was 105, which was the lowest score of anyone who had entered in, th- in that tournament. That was uh, right around the time he had learned the game. This past championship, his score was 1,587. And for some comparison, the world's best player holds a record of 2,845. 
Like that's that's the height of chess in the world and right now. And he's more than halfway there, and yeah. he's only known the game for a year. Um, that is a wizard. Adults right Adults around him are astounded at the at the the level and the degree to which he has risen in the game. He's just skyrocketed. Tournament coaches at this past tournament were really concerned with the aggressive style of playing. They were alarmed when he would like sacrifice bishops for pawns, but then they would feed his moves into computers and the computers would agree with Tani. Because oh it set him up strategically better for later in the game. He's just, he, and he's, he's learning constantly. He practices every week. His mom takes him to a, a three hour free chess practice thing on Saturdays every week. And he um, practices on his dad's laptop every night. Um, he's, he's just playing constantly. I and mean, right now he's prepping for the national elementary school championship coming up in May. Um, How, what grade are you in when you're eight? Like, is it third first, grade? It's third grade. Third grade. Right. Wow. Yeah. And you know, what's amazing, apart from the fact that of, of his, his age and the, just the time frame in which he learned to chess and has risen to this degree is also just the fact that he, he and his family are living in a homeless shelter and they don't have much and they're not rich in resources in this country right now but they are they are what they are rich in is support for each other and support for tani um and it's they're just investing so their, inspiring their time. they're it's, investing their time yeah. and their resources and the energy that they do have to like help this kid do something that I assume he really likes to do. Yeah, and and what's cool too is you know where where he came from in Nigeria. This there was no outlet for this sort of a skill, really. I mean, there's no chess championship in Nigeria, but he has found this place to put his talent and his drive, and he is going full force, obviously, at it. And it's just so inspiring and oh so cool. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to see so. what happens to this kid. Yeah. We might have to do our first follow-up story ever, do you, mm. and like see how he does in the national championships I'm down. for third graders yeah. in chess. <laughs> Almost at the like one of the top chess levels in the world. <laughs> Heck yeah. Oh my gosh. You go, Tani. Yeah, Tani. You are truly a wizard. <laughs> Holy cow. You could be the youngest Grandmaster, and we're very excited. Yes. Grandmaster wizard or Grandmaster chess player? <laughs> Is that a term that I just don't know because I don't play chess? It's, it's a chess term, yeah, oh. but I think... Grandmaster Is wizard, chess wizard. I think wizard might also be a, a term applied to chess players at some point. You are a wizard, That Tani. would be great. Yes, Tani. Way to go. We are so proud of you. We're yep. proud of your parents for getting themselves into the environment that they thought would be best for them and for their lovely children to grow and flourish. And it sounds like you are doing beautifully. Mm -hmm. um, so this is this is very exciting. I'm like you're eight. He's eight years old. Yeah. Well. It's bananas. You know, it's the quality of your convictions that determines your success. Oh dang! You tied that quote in today and everything. Oh shoot! Oh shoot! And I'm really inspired by his. Uh, drive and conviction yeah absolutely it's really in incredible i think that's it for our podcast today yeah it's a good one again feeling good mm -hmm. feeling really good good old tawny I'll, I'll i'm gonna like everything i'll be like well if tawny gets out of bed every day with the help of his mommy and daddy to do what he's gotta do i can get out of bed and do what i gotta do yeah you can do it you can do it also as another reminder seek help you're, You're worth, worth it. it. You want to wrap us up with a quote, oh, Miss Mary Lou? Yes, I do. And this kind of ties in to what we've been talking about as well, totally unplanned. Oh. So, the person who says it cannot be done should not interrupt the person who is doing it. Oh, shoot. Chinese proverb. Yes. Right? Exactly. I relate to this one so much. In, you know, in my line of work, in the creative arts, like what we do, so many people are like, don't, you can't, it stinks, you're wasting your time. Oh, you're so smart. You could literally be doing anything else. Why aren't you a doctor? Why aren't you in some profession that could make you a miserable millionaire? And it's like, well, because so this, much this is what makes me happy. Spent on the 
the why the, nots and the and uh, the, the naysayers. Yeah, it's so much energy, right? Put put some of that into the encouragement, you know. I know, like encouragement is appreciated because you know, pursuing a living in the creative arts. Uh, you know, it's generally a little bit more undervalued on the whole. Uh, and it's harder to make a living because you're essentially auditions are basically like job interviews. Right. Mm. And I do m all, all the job interviews every week, all the time. Yeah. And I have fun with it. So I like it. It's great. Who, who would have thought like an eight year old can learn chess in a year and rise to the championships. Yeah, and get, leave him, don't interrupt him by telling him he can. He's, he's let him focus. Right? Don't say, why are you sacrificing that bishop for a pawn? Right. Like, don't interrupt the person who is doing it. We're doing it. Tawny's doing it. And you can do it. Yes, you can absolutely do it. So don't let them interrupt your path to awesomeness. Keep going. You're a wizard. Seek help, you're worth it. All the good um, positivity. <laughs> positivity quotables. Yeah. So uh, thank you so, so much for being here with us this week. We really, really appreciate we it. We do. And we'll see you next Thursday. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for hanging out with us this week on the Positivity Podcast. If you'd like to connect with us, you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Miss Mary Lou, at Positivity, T E A Podcast, at gmail.com. And we are also on YouTube at the Miss Mary Lou YouTube channel. Wherever you are listening to us, please give us a like, a follow, a share, and leave a nice review. We would appreciate a little bit of positivity in our lives. The logo design is by Hilda Meyer Post. The music is by my co-host, Jacob Kahn. I am your co-host, Miss Mary Lou Ryan, and I hope you have a wonderful week, and we'll see you on Thursday.